All right, guys, this is being recorded, and I mentioned this at the beginning of every webinar. Watch it again, you know, because I cover different content in these different webinars. And even though I may have done the bearish risk reversal, you guys drive the content here. You know, if you have different questions that may not have even been brought up in another webinar, uh, then I cover that. I want to make sure everybody is clear a concept before we move on. So feel free to reach out in that questions box if you have any questions throughout this, because I will answer those. I'm not going to wait till the end for you. Uh, I want to make sure you guys are clear on all this. Now, this is implementation of options into a portfolio. So a lot of times I do this in and around just trading, okay? We set up these different option strategies for trading, but now I'm trying to gear this one a little bit closer towards, we have a portfolio already, and what we're trying to do is take these different option strategies and implement them into our portfolio to help us increase our yield. Okay, so it's kind of assuming we already have a portfolio somewhere, whether it's a 401k, you can do that as well. If you have a 401k or a, uh, something like that somewhere else that you aren't really able to trade in, you can use your trading portfolio to kind of hedge those risks as well. Because think about it, it really is uh, synthetically, for lack of a better word, uh, all one, right? It's all your portfolio value. They may be just lying in different places that you want to hedge. And sometimes it's difficult to throw options into a uh, IRA or a Roth IRA too. So uh, this is a good way to kind of hedge some of those other risks. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this says bearish risk reversal. A lot of times you're just going to hear somebody say risk reversal because the risk reversal is usually assumed to be a protection or bearish uh, strategy. The reason why is because most people's portfolios are mostly bullish, right? We go out and we buy a stock. If you buy a stock, that is a bullish assumption. So the risk reversal is to kind of hedge some of that stuff. Like, you know, when you're at all time highs in uh, the stock markets, people start worrying about some of that downside risk and may want to protect that. So we're gonna talk about a little bit more how we can hedge that portfolio and also implement this just as a uh, bearish strategy. But let me get a couple of things out of the way real quick. My name is Eric Wilkinson. If you guys haven't already heard of me, I used to do stuff on CNBC, Fox Business and Wall Street Journal. And I've talked about everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. I actually started out trading in college with some money I had earned and uh, trying to get a psychology degree at the same time. Decided to switch it over to finance and after graduating college, I moved to Chicago and started working on the floor of the Board of Trade. So in that time, I've traded everything from stocks, financial futures, commodity futures, currencies, and options on all these products in just about all market conditions. Y'all probably have seen this before. This is a disclaimer saying that anything that I say in this webinar should not constitute investment advice. We are here to teach you guys how to implement these strategies into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. I don't know what your risk parameters are. I don't know what your portfolio has in it. So it would not behoove me to actually tell you what is a good directional assumption. All right. So uh, please remember past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right. You guys can follow me on Twitter at Wolfman's blog. Our parent company is at ProTraderStrat. We also are putting out a lot of content on Facebook at ProTraderStrategies.com. So check that out. You get uh, quick access to these videos. I do daily market commentaries. We're throwing a lot of that stuff out there on Facebook as well. We do have our YouTube channel uh, that you can cycle through as well that has uh, most of our videos, you know, that you can kind of search through. All right. So like I said, this is the bearish risk reversal. One thing we need to know is, do we have a market assumption? And I kind of already mentioned this. Yes, it's bearish to neutral. The nice thing about this is, if the market trades sideways on us, the way we are going to build this strategy out, the way I'm going to uh, encourage you guys to build this strategy out, we don't have any risk if the market stays very neutral. All right, there are ways to build this out where you will have risk and have to make up for that downside move. But with this, the way I'm going to talk about it, we're going to try and build this out so that if the market does stay neutral, 
um, and maybe even travels a little bit higher, it won't hurt us too bad, at least if you hold it to the end of the day. So uh, when we're talking about max profit and all that stuff, keep in mind that is when the mar or the those options are expiring. So in the interim, we'll be able to make some money on the directional move there, if we are correct. All right, so it is the short risk reversal, the bearish risk reversal. We're basically going to be buying a long out of the money put, and then we're gonna sell a short out of the money call, okay? So those are gonna be pretty far apart. Uh, and what we're going to really try to do is build this out to be 50 deltas. That's going to be our ultimate goal here is to try and make it 50 deltas on this. So basically we're gonna try and find some puts that are about a 25 delta and the calls are gonna be about a 25 delta also. It should make that equal so it's not confusing. All right, um, it's not ever going to really be 25 and 25, okay? Uh, we're, the idea is that's a mindset we're going in for. Uh, and what that does is when you put those together, you obviously get 50 deltas. Well, what does that mean? If you buy 100 of an underlying or short 100 of the underlying, that is 100 deltas. So this is going to be equivalent to half of that. It's like doing a 50 lot in the underlying. And that's very difficult to do right now uh, with the trading platforms, the way they're set up. Uh, the only really way to do that is to go to a discount broker, right? Uh, but when we have a smaller portfolio, this is a great way to build out a balanced portfolio using the risk reversal because we can use the deltas to adjust how many of that underlying we are uh, going to be building. So it makes it very similar to the risk reward of a stock position. The reason why it's not exact, you know, a stock position we would make money on a direct move dollar for dollar to the downside. This one, we're gonna make, you know, if the, you know, this is 100 and this is zero. Uh, basically, we are going to be able to make money on the down move and it's gonna be kind of like that. So on a short stock position, it would actually be something like that, okay? Um, so it's very similar to it. This is that area that I talked about that, you know, we can kind of be neutral because we're going to be building this out for a credit. So uh, when we sell that short call and then buy that long put, this is that little area that we can kind of be neutral. The further it goes, it will catch up to as if we had shorted that underlying, but we will be able to make money on our PL. If this is your look at it as your PL on this side being negative and positive to that side, okay? So that's kind of what the risk parameters are gonna set up. And uh, one easy way to kind of do this, this is what I was talking about. We aren't going to be able to get it exactly 50 deltas. We're gonna be looking at this column here and this column over here where we come up with our deltas, right? Now, the delta here, uh, when I set this up for GLD for a bearish move, you can see I got 26 deltas and then over here, 25 deltas. Well, that totals out to be 51, right? So this position would be carrying like I got 51 of the underlying, okay? Uh, it's going to be a lot less than shorting this underlying. If I were to short it, this is going to be about half the margin, uh, a little bit less than even half the margin of what we would normally have to do. But remember, if you were to go out and short GLD, you're gonna be doing 100 contracts. You can't really do it for 50. They don't, they don't let you do that on very many platforms at all. So we'll be able to build this out. It'll be better for like a smaller portfolio if you don't have hundreds of thousands of dollar in, dollars in your trading portfolio. Well, this is a great way to set it up to where you only have 50 of that underlying. And keep in mind, um, you know, if this went down by a dollar, if uh, GLD went down to, say 141.30, well, if I had shorted this, then I would have made a full dollar if it went down to that. You know, you would have made a full dollar with this one. We're gonna make about 50 cents on it, all right? So uh, it makes it about half as much as well. So your uh, profit will be. But once, you know, this gets, maybe if it sells off $10, our deltas are actually gonna increase, as you can see into this side those deltas will start increasing quite a bit um, as the 
uh, puts would go further into the money here, all right? So it's going to catch up to what the underlying will be as your delta start adjusting. So you'll have to keep an eye on that as well. Um, all right, so uh, our max profit is that underlying goes to zero, all right? Minus any, uh, plus or minus any credit or debit. You know, anytime you do something for a credit, you're gonna be able to keep that. Um, our loss is unlimited because if that stock goes to a million, remember our, you know, as we had our risk parameter set up like this, you know, the stock goes to zero, I showed you. If it goes to zero, it's going to be whatever the value was when we got into it. So if it was a hundred, you know, we could make it up all the way to zero. But if it goes to, you know, a thousand, then our loss is going to keep incrementally going uh, against us. So we do need to figure out what our exit strategy is. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, make sure we aren't writing that out into the sunset on a loser. We're going to get out of those early. Uh, but when we have a break even, it's when we receive a credit, it's that call strike plus the credit. So when we're talking about we have a bearish position, again, I'll draw this back up. You know, the call is going to be way out here. Our puts are here. Well, if we get a credit, then our break even is going to be higher than where our call strike is. Remember, we're going to be getting into this underlying right around there. So we have a lot of wiggle room to be wrong if it starts moving higher. All right. But if you do that for the debit, then know that our break even is going to be the put strike minus the uh, debit. So, oops, I did that wrong. So the call strike is going to be there. But if we do it for a debit, you know, this line is actually going to be down here below. So we have to make up a lot of uh, downside move in order to make it up. That's the, the put side, all right? You're going to be starting out where this is below your, uh, your break even. Uh, somebody's asking if this is a, uh, a collar in reverse. Yes, if you own the underlying, this would be a collar in reverse. The bullish risk reversal would be your collar. Um, actually, no, this would be the, uh, sorry, this would be a collar because we're selling that call uh, and buying that put. So that would be the collar if you own the underlying. Okay, but this, the way we're setting it up, you know, if you wanted to build it for a collar and you had X, Y, Z, um, you know, 100 contracts of X, Y, Z, well, this is 100 deltas, right? And we're building this out for 50 deltas. Well, you would need to do um, this and hold it into the end of the day, okay, in order to get those underlines to... Um, be taken away from you or you you put that to somebody okay i'm i'm going to do uh do a strategy where we talk specifically more about the collar and the benefits of that in this one this is more for trading and hedging an overall portfolio okay good question though bill it's basically if you own the underlying this would be building out a collar around that yes but i'm not going to I'm not going to talk about that one in this because um, it, it could get confusing. I want to talk about a full on portfolio hedge in a sense, or just a trade for smaller portfolio values. <clears throat> All right. Now, here's that same example in gold where we were looking at it. We're building it out as a credit. So you can see where I was talking about the break even on the upside is all the way up here. And this is where the underlying is currently trading uh, for GLD. So if you do it for a credit, you know, you have a lot of wiggle room here to the upside and the downside. And again, if this was done for a debit, um, then the line would have extended below here and, you know, kind of looked like that if it were a straight line. <laughs> okay. So we want to build this out for a credit if at all possible. And you might need to move around your strikes to get that credit. I would highly suggest doing this for a credit nonetheless. All right, now, Bill, in a similar situation to what we were talking about, if you wanted to build out a portfolio hedge, overall portfolio value, and you're basically going to take this uh, 
mathematical equation and you're going to take your portfolio value, whatever that is, let's just say for lack of a better example, we have $100,000 in our portfolio of all different kinds of stocks, okay? Now, if you're tech heavy, if you like a lot of tech, then you probably wouldn't use the SPY, you might go to the Qs, okay? To build, uh, to figure all of this math out. So know what's in your portfolio. If it's all blue chips, then you would do something more correlated to the Dow, okay? Um, and if you're all over, if you're emerging markets, you might want to use the EEM. Okay. Uh, but figure out what in, if, you know, part of it is in emerging markets, let's just say, you know, 50% was in emerging markets and the rest was in tech, then, you know, you would basically, uh, cut your portfolio value, uh, and break it down to what the, that underlying, what those underlines are. If it was 50% emerging markets, then you would probably do $50,000 for EEM, 50,000 for the Qs, okay? And then do this math on there, all right? So what we were doing, we come up with, we had $100,000 portfolio value and it's pretty diversified in different stocks. Then we take where the SPY is today and it was right around um, 320 when I punched this in here, times 100. So that basically equals 3.125, all right? So we would want to do three uh, of these risk reversals in the SPY to hedge that portfolio. You don't wanna hedge the entire thing uh, unless you are seriously bearish and very, very worried about the downside, but this would just be a general hedge to an overall portfolio, if that's what you're looking to implement this in around, all right? If we are looking at something like my GLD example, that would just be kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm looking at just implementing this in and around a uh, bearish assumption, all right? All right, so when we're looking at this for the right stock or the right underlying, just know that if you're doing a portfolio value, again, go back to thinking, what is in my portfolio? Is it tech heavy? If I'm hedging my portfolio and I am tech heavy, I don't want to be doing the emerging markets, right? I don't want to use that because that's not really a hedge. I would want to use the cues. Uh, also, uh, with this, if you're doing this as just a trade for a bearish assumption, this goes back to the same rules that I normally talk about with uh, any other type of trade is we get, need to go over and look at our uh, trading platform. And if it's a stock over $100 or even an ETF for that matter, what we want to do is make sure that there is good uh, options trading going on. Okay. There's a lot of participation. So on a stock over $100, I talk about moving the decimal. It's the same thing. Move it three ticks to the left and it would be equal to, equal to or less than uh, 13 cents to the bid offer. And we're looking at the ones that are the spot where there's the most trading. And we've got to look down here, these calls and the puts that are just out of the money here uh, and make sure they are within 13 cents to the bid offer, okay? If they're too wide, there's just going to be way too much, um, too much wiggle room in there. You're gonna to have to figure out the pricing. It's going to be one person or two people in there making markets and you might end up having to give up too edge too much edge all right if it is a stock that is less than $100 then we want to make sure that it is going to be equal to or if it's less than $100 stock then we need to make sure it's equal to or less than 10 cents wide from the bid offer in the calls and in these puts all right just out of the money. The ones that go into the money aren't going to follow that rule because most people are keeping their eyeballs on these here and uh, these puts over here. So make sure that it fits that rule. You can see Gilead Science fits that, be falling in between those, all right? So make sure that happens. Uh, but if you are looking to hedge a portfolio, just remember picking the right underlying, make sure this fits what's in your portfolio. So if it's SPY, you got a pretty rounded uh, portfolio. If it's uh, all blue chips, then you need to look at the, the Dow indexes. 
Uh, if you are looking at um, tech heavy, then go to the Qs or the NASDAQ futures, all right? All right, the strikes. I talked about this. We want to make sure this is trying to be equal to 50 deltas, all right? Um, that's going to be a good hedge for a, a collar if you are building it around a specific underlying, maybe you're long Tesla and you are worried about it topping out. Well, then you would want to build this out to be 50 deltas. That gets you far enough away that um, the, the chances are it's going to stay within that range most likely. Uh, you will, if it starts moving down, make 50 cents up for every dollar move. Because remember the underlying, if you have 100 of the underlying and only 50 of these, if it goes down by a dollar, you're hedging 50 cents of that downward move. So, um, but keep in mind, if it moves against you and Tesla keeps going higher, you're gonna lose out on 50 cents of that upward move, unless you hold this to the end of the day, right? And if you hold it to the end of the day, we can see that um, if it stayed within our range here, then we can see that we would be able to uh, still then make up for that dollar. Because at the end of the day, the options are gonna expire worthless if we landed inside of that area, right? If we stayed within this range here between the upper bands here, and we put this collar on and it stayed within here, then we would end up getting to keep this credit, all right? So that is good. Uh, we'd get, keep the credit and if the underlying traded from 142 all the way up to 152, all right, and these then expired worthless, well, we would get to keep the credit, we'd keep the underlying, and we would have then made up for that dollar for dollar upside. It's only when at the end at expiration that you start seeing that start to lose, all right? Inside of this time, you know, between now and March expiration, it will feel like you are losing money if it is going against you, okay? Because it's going to be uh, tracking as it goes along, all right? But ultimately with a collar type idea, you are then able to all of a sudden at March expiration, this expires worthless, you get to keep the credit and you get to keep that uh, market move that went to your upside. Again, though, if it goes down, it's going to feel like we are, you know, hedging ourselves all the way down. If it expired right here, then, um, you know, we would have lost that dollar for dollar. So make sure you cover that uh, before that happens then. Okay. So when I'm talking about picking the right strikes, there's something we need to keep an eye on also is we have a normal distribution curve. All right. That means everything is pretty equal. And when we look at this, you think about this as being the calls down here, and this as being the puts. And basically, when you're looking at a distribution curve, all of these standard deviations, a half standard deviation, one standard deviation, those line up with the deltas of the calls and the puts. So when we're adding that up, you know, you can figure out that sometimes there are like in this example that I just showed you here, you can see that there is a lot of call skew because if you look at where the underlying here is now and I go from 42 to 38, that's only four ticks down. Well, there is definitely a positive skew because to the upside, that equal distance uh, should have been only four ticks to the upside, right? So we could have been talking about 46, right? Add four in here then my strike location would have been here. Well, there's so much call skew that I was able to sell this call a lot further out. And we saw the strikes on this, they were very close to 25 deltas each. And that has to do with the fact that we are looking at skew. And you know, this is positive skew, which means most people are bullish. So when we have skew, you can see that the that isn't equal, all right? And the negative skew where it gets pushed to the put side is not equal as well. So we can take an example of uh, uh, United Health here, and we're going to look at this one 
this has got normal distribution. So if we look at where the underlying is trading is one or 295, and this is something I didn't cover in that other webinar. So, um, you know, this is something that we're, is new, especially if you looked at the bullish uh, risk reversal that we did. So let's say that this is the at the money is the 195 because that's about as close as we can get, right? Well, let's just look at $5 down. They're trading, you know, right in between is about 435 and we go $5 higher, which is these right here. It's right around 435, 440. So you could say that the equal distant put to the equal distant call from where the at the monies are, are very well priced, you know, relatively close to being the same. Can we agree on that? But then if I go over here and look at uh, Caterpillar, Caterpillar we're gonna see has negative skew. So if I look at this underlying trading, we're gonna call it 148, right? That's about as close as we're gonna get. So these we're gonna say are the at the monies. So let's just go $3 down, 148 gets us to the 145s. These are $2.10 uh, in between and we go $3 higher. Actually, let's go $2 higher because I don't have a $3 higher strike. So $2 lower. We'll look at these. $246, $250, and $2 higher gets me to the $250. You can see that those puts equal distance away are much more expensive. So that means there is more bearish sentiment in Caterpillar. So there is uh, put skew, right? There's skew to the downside. And if we go and look at my other example that I kind of already showed you guys, which was with GLD, you know that there already is a lot of positive skew, bullishness in this. A lot of people are buying the calls much more than they are with the puts. So, sorry, I don't know why I have the volume and open interest up there. I wish I had the deltas. But um, anyway, if we look at where the underlying is trading, 142, we can call this the at the money is right, 142. Well, let's just go $2 down. These are trading 58, 59 and go $2 higher to these. You can see that there is, uh, they are twice as expensive, all right? Now me, I am a contrarian. So I like to, anytime there's this bullish skew in there, I like to take advantage of that. Uh, I just think it gets a little overdone and a little frothy at that at point. So that's why I was using that example of a uh, bearish um, risk reversal with GLD because I was able to get those uh, those calls, you know, relatively uh, further away than where I was able to do the put. So that means my puts are going to go in the money much quicker, right? So uh, that's why I was kind of building that one out. I usually look at this. If I can find that big skew differential, that's probably where I'm going to be looking to take advantage of it um, for that type of trade. And in this one, I think I was uh, going a little bit further out in time as well for that one. All right. Anybody have any questions on that? You guys see how that skew happens, how it kind of uh, manipulates what these regular bell curve will look like on this skew handle. So you can see where the, uh, you know, this is where the underlying is kind of trading here. These equal distance away on the deltas are going to be a little bit more off. All right. Okay. All right. Now the duration, you know, you're going to have to, again, pick what we're doing here. If we're building this out, for something that is a short-term trade, then I'm gonna be looking at something that is a little bit shorter duration, okay? Uh, especially if I wanna just keep that credit that I'm building out and say something like uh, GLD. But if I'm looking to build out this for a portfolio hedge or uh, something like that, you know, maybe a longer term trend, then I'm gonna go longer duration. The beauty in this trade is, is that we are going to be able to really get rid of theta decay. We're going to be able to isolate this type of uh, situation where we usually have to worry about theta decay in our options. And the reason why is because when we're building this out, there every, just about everything is going to offset uh, itself. So let's just say, for instance, I was um, 
nah, let's go closer then because there's not enough strikes. If we look over here at the theta and I was going to build something out with this strategy, I'm going to be looking at the 25 delta call and the 25 delta put. Well, you can see that I'm not getting that exactly. And what we're going to do is buy the puts and sell those uh, 26 So and sell those calls. So I'm getting a three cent credit. That works for me. Uh, I want to do this as a one lot because I want to do it as a 50 uh, of the underline. Um, now, what I'm talking about with theta, you know, when I'm selling this call, I'm selling theta, which then becomes a positive, right? Because negative plus a negative is a positive, meaning if I sold these at 69 cents, uh, I want that theta decay to happen, right? I want it to continuously eat away at that premium, which is good. But then if I were to buy these puts, buying negative theta is negative to that particular strike. So it's working against me. So they basically will offset. You can see three cents and three cents, those are offsetting. We can look at the Vega, it's five cents. And over here, it should be five cents as well. So they're offsetting. We don't have to worry about the volatility increasing or decreasing with this strategy. So it's great for newer uh, traders to options because we're able to isolate it. We're able to offset that uh, quite a bit. The gamma is going to pretty much offset. I mean, one penny, we're not gonna worry about that too much. And as a matter of fact, if you carried out all these decimal, this might just be a rounding area, rounding error that uh, could be made up for. So the Greeks were able to isolate with this because we're going equal distance away on the deltas and creating this out. Again, this one, we, we, we would be building this out for 52 deltas. So it's just slightly more than that, you know, 50 deltas I was originally talking about, but that's fine. Still great for an underlying or a, a portfolio that has a smaller account value, all right? and great for uh, a hedge. You know, you're not gonna be worrying about that two cents for every dollar move, all right? It's going to feel the same way. Um, so we don't have to, that's why I was saying we're not gonna have to worry about the duration necessarily, uh, unless you are wanting to be in this for a longer time, you go further out in uh, on the time horizon, it's still, these things are still going to offset one another, all right? And if it stayed within uh, 69 and 64 at expiration, I would get to keep this credit, all right? Just remember that it starts going above 69 and starts trading 70, then that's gonna be where it starts hurting us, all right? Um, and you know, for somebody that has a lower risk tolerance or very new to trading strategies, that if it comes up there and hits that 69, and a half, that might be where I look to cover this trade to get out for uh, a loss, all right? Um, and if it's a winner, then I'm just gonna probably ride it out. You might even cover those calls just to take some of that risk off if this became a really big winner because these are gonna be pretty much worthless. All they can do is hurt you at that point. Let's say if they go down and they're only, these calls are only worth 10 cents. This is one of the few strategies that I would probably look to leg out of if this was becoming a big winner, all right? Uh, would you still look for the 25 deltas for the calls and the puts? Yes, uh, as close as I can get to it. You know, you know, if I wanted to, you, you could even do maybe the 30, uh, if you wanted to buy the 30 puts and sell uh, the, um, you know, the smaller delta calls. Uh, but remember, you're going to be doing that then for a debit, which, makes you have to make up all of that room for uh, the downside. So let's just say, for instance, I did it that way um, and built it out. You can see I'm doing that for a debit. And when I go over and look at the Analyze tab, you're gonna see that this trade starts out looking like a loser. And you, know, you will make up money as it starts moving. You are just going to have to have it go in your direction rather quickly. Remember, this is at expiration. All right, so you do have to pay the debit for it, which puts you behind the eight ball in a sense right away. You have to make up for that difference. This is that expiration though, but every dollar GLD goes down, all right? 
It goes down from 66.39, uh, where it's currently trading, and it goes down to 65.39. Well, we're going to make up 53 cents of that. You can see the delta is 53 on this one. All right. But I like to build it out for a credit that gives me a lot more wiggle room to be wrong. Uh, I don't like to build it out for a debit, which is why I try to go to those uh, those deltas that are very similar. All right. Does that make, did I answer your question, Chen? All right, um, I think I did. Okay, good. All right, the environment. Now, you guys know I usually talk about volatility when I talk about the environment. Well, volatility is not gonna affect us. I showed you guys that on the platform. We don't need to back test it or anything like that. We can see the math uh, right there on the platform. But know that when you are creating this in a higher volatility environment, uh, this is where you're gonna start seeing your strikes get further away, right? So one risk uh, parameter might be really long like that. This would be uh, in high volatility, all right, IV, because it's still going to be a product of delta. Delta gets further away from where the underlying is, the higher volatility, whereas in lower vol environments, it might look more like that, okay? So keep that in mind. We're able to offset all of that stuff, but remember, um, that we are still going to gain, our portfolio value is still going to gain as this underlying goes. This is all having to do with at expiration. So we're able to offset a lot of those things. Just know that it is going to be a lot tighter in low volatility. I like to do this one in and around mid implied volatility, okay? So, you know, when IV percent is around uh, 50. But when we're talking about implied volatility, what we need to know is what current implied volatility is minus the low implied volatility, okay? We take that sum and divide it by the high implied volatility minus the low implied volatility, okay? That's just the equation to come out with uh, IV percent, that equals IV percent. So. You know, if it's at 100, you know it, it's at extreme highs. When it's at zero, it, it's at extreme lows. And I like to try and shoot for something mid-range. So, you know, right now everything's really low implied volatility, but I would say something in or around, the, you know, 40 to 60 IV percent. And the reason why I say that is because if that's kind of the sweet spot, the reason why I say that is because that there are better strategies for a bearish assumption with really high implied volatility and there's better strategies for extremely low volatility as far as i'm concerned just what i mean by that is just higher probabilities of success you know with this one uh you have pretty good probabilities of success it's just slightly above uh, a 50 um 50 50 you know if you go and short a stock that's 50 50 if you go and buy a stock that's 50 50. this is slightly better than that especially when you're doing it uh the way i set it up and that's with the credit all right so that's what switches that paradigm slightly in your favor there is uh by doing that for a credit all right if you're doing it for a debit your your probabilities kind of flip the other way just albeit slightly uh, because you have to make up for that ground uh at expiration, all right? So that's picking the right environment. Now, knowing our exit strategy, if you guys are looking at this um, with Fibonacci and stuff like that, I'll just pull up a platform. Uh, if you have a lower risk tolerance, keep in mind, go with what I was talking about with that trade, uh, where if it went against me and came up here and hit my uh, strikes that I was short, uh, that's where I would look to cover this. So in this regard, you know, if they started going against me and uh, was my, you know, uh, I'm newer to options trading, then I would probably get out when it gets here. Give me a second here. Dogs opening my office door, breaking in on me. Um, all right, so that's what I would probably do if I was uh, looking at this from, a, uh, a just a trade, you know, 
I don't have any problems if you, excuse me, did something like this and you had your Fibonacci's, right? And we got into this trade and said, I think it's bearish. It's going to come down maybe to the uh, $64, which lines up with the 61 Fibonacci here. Uh, maybe I think it's going to go to there. But if after today it broke in the support, if it goes back the other way and gets above here, then I'm out, you know, uh, then go with that. Write that stuff down. Gilead, I would say that it looks like it's going to roll over and maybe trade back down. Um, so I might look at this area right there and say that that is really where we are looking to get out. All right. So I would say, you know, I'm looking at, uh, I think that's 6660. You know, if it breaks above 6660, uh, $66.60, then that's where um, I'm going to be out of a winner. All right. Or uh, sorry, a loser there. So I don't know why it flipped there. Um, but that's where I would get out. Write that stuff down, you guys, because you are more likely to stay mechanical. There's a lot of things that happen when you are trading. And, you know, money is emotional. And a lot of times you might say, well, it broke above there for one day and I think it's going to come back. Well, stick with your rules. All right. Wherever you're normally used to getting in and out of trades, make that mine would probably be you know if it broke above and outside of this range uh when i'm looking at it let's just say i was bearish i would probably i have a higher risk tolerance i would probably say something like i'm going to go at this 68 dollars uh for a loser to the upside and have my profit target maybe uh to come down here to that 64. all right just remember we're only making up for 50 cents on every dollar move there so know your exit strategy, write that down uh, because you will most likely stick with that uh, going forward. If it's just in your head, you're gonna have a tendency to uh, allow yourself a little bit more um, uh, risk a lot of times. I can't tell you how many times I've seen that happen. So um, Chen, I don't know, what are you saying uh, with SHW there? You want me to take a look at that one? Because this is the time of the webinar where I throw it out to you guys. Let's, we got bearish assumptions in something. Let's go through these rules and see if it, uh, you know, it fits with the underlying strike duration and all of those things and uh, try and build that out. So I'll pull up the platform. You guys can throw that stuff out in the questions box and uh, we'll take a look at some different things. So, with me, I was, as you can see, I was already kind of going through different stocks that I would look at. Um, I'm not necessarily bearish on GLD, but it does feel like it's getting a little overextended here to the upside. So let's just say for that reason, you know, anytime it starts gapping out too much, I just feel like it's, it's ready to come back and maybe fill in some of those. So that's why I picked GLD. And remember, because we can isolate most of that theta and everything else, then I would probably look a little bit closer to these strikes here where I'm buying the 138s and then I'm going to be going out there and um, doing the 138s. I got 26 deltas. Uh, I'll probably go a little bit further out on these calls. And you know, you could even go out further to be quite honest, because I got 25 but I'm gonna stick with my rules and try and create this as 50 deltas. So you can see, because I'm taking advantage of that skew, a lot of people coming in, buying those calls, you know, it's made that move. I think that these guys have overpriced the calls or whatever, and I, I can take advantage of that skew. It gives me a lot of wiggle room to the upside. 151 is, you know, the 52 week highs. Do I think that we're gonna see that? I, I doubt it. Um, so for me, I might even not even wait for it to go up and touch those uh, calls to get out. I might just say, you know what, I'm getting out. It, it breaks above 146, okay, the 52-week high. I'm going to write that stuff down, whether it's in my notes around this trade or in a uh, uh, spiral notebook, which I have stacks of right here that my wife hates having on my desk. But, you know, I like to keep track of that stuff, write it down so that I stay mechanical. I wanna take the emotion out of it. And if it trades down to 130, 
three or one third or one thirty four, then that's where I would look to get out of it. Keep in mind, my risk parameters on this is set up where I didn't set this up on the analyze tab. This is at expiration. So if it expired within my calls and my puts, then uh, I would get to keep that 31 cents. If it starts, uh, if it settles outside of this, you know, I'd get to keep almost dollar for dollar. So you can see this purple line is where you would have shorted the underlying and you can see dollar for dollar, it uh, tracks it uh, to the winner and to the loser side. It catches up with it. And that's a product of the deltas. And that's what I was saying. Let's just say I set this strategy up when we were trading, um, you know, at 146 and I got this directional move, you can see that uh, those 146s have gone. And the further that I would have gone, those puts gone into the money, you know, because if I started out here and went down uh, from 146, you can see that the deltas start increasing, all right? So we start out at 50 deltas, well, as soon as my puts start going into the money, you can see the deltas really start to increase on that put side. So it starts catching up with where the underlying is. And that would have been a case where my calls are gonna be virtually worthless, maybe worth 10 cents or 15 cents or something. I would probably cover those calls at that point, all right? Um, just because there's no sense in if it started going uh, the other way, uh, and started rallying, I don't want those calls to come back to haunt me. So that's where I would probably look to cover those um, and most likely the whole trade, but uh, I at least cover those calls at that point. Okay, good enough. Uh, B, consider a collar on BA. I have, uh, I created a synthetic short for uh, Boeing, but we can take a look at that. So, uh, Boeing, if you have the underlying, you can see there's my synthetic short on uh, Boeing. But to create that collar around that, um, and we're worried about the downside if you owned it, then yes, I would go in here and look at the 24, 25 delta, and you're going to look to um, buy the puts and uh, look for the 20, I'd probably go with the 24s and sell those calls there. All right, for every 100 lot you have on this, if you had 200 contracts, I would probably do, then do two of them. Whoops, I would do two contracts, all right? If you had 1,000 of these, I'd probably do five. Probably hedge about half of them, all right? That's usually how I play it, all right? Half of them are, you know, you want to do the full collar, then you're going to do it. If you had 200, you'd do two and whatnot, all right? All right, uh, so that's how I would kind of set that up, maybe even around mine if I started getting worried about it a little bit. Uh, but I've already got the bearish position on it, so I'm not gonna add to that position. But that's how I would kind of set that up in and around there. Uh, protection, you know, 300 is gonna be a psychological level that you're gonna have to keep an eye on. But again, if it went all the way down to 300, these calls are gonna be almost worthless. That, Chen, is probably where I would then cover those call side of it and just leave on the puts, all right? Because then if it started rallying back, you know, you get the full upside to that. If it starts rallying back, then you probably call it, cover the puts as well, but um, immediately, but you've already covered those calls in a sense. So yeah, you could do something like that as well. All right, um, let's do um, one other one. I, somebody threw out Walmart. So Walmart, I actually want to go through the entire uh, series here. So we got a, a bearish assumption for Walmart. One of the things we got to keep in mind is we got, you know, if we do this longer duration, um, you are going to have uh, the earnings calls and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know that I would necessarily leave this on around those earnings calls, um, you know, unless you are really worried about the downside, then, then go for it. But uh, it's probably a situation I'd, I would take it off before that. All right. So with my rule, we look at the spot month. We're not going to be looking at these way out here in time.
to fit that rule of moving it uh, stock over $100, three decimals to the left. Although you can see a stock that is widely traded like Walmart fits that rule. We're gonna look at it inside of, you know, closest to 35 days to expiration, the monthlies that are closest to 35 days to expiration. And that is because 35 days to expiration is a sweet spot for options traders. That's usually where the most eyeballs are. And if you have the most eyeballs, you guys, that's where uh, you're gonna get your tightest markets. And know that there's all kinds of algos out there also. They're trading in the spot month mostly, but those algos have spreads on, you know, there's calendar spreads and all kinds of things uh, that might not necessarily uh, show up in the pricing mechanism that far out, uh, but there's still sometimes better markets that you're not necessarily seeing. Uh, just know that for a fact. I, I could go into the, the, the theory behind it. Basic, well, I'll, I'll do it since I mentioned it. It's basically a lean on a lean, you guys. So when you're spreading, right, if you're spreading a calendar or a diagonal or something, well, what happens is the market may bid better uh, to sell something, okay? So if the spot month up here, uh, goes to 144 bid in the calls, right? Well, these calls out here might actually uptick to, um, you know, buy a penny as well, right? Because somebody's got a spread. They'll buy out here in the Feb and then sell in here in the January. Well, the March, if there's a Feb March spread on, well, that March is not going to show up as an actual bid. The February will uptick by a penny. You will be able to see that because it's leaning on an outright. But what happens is a lean on a won't lean on a lean. So if somebody came in here, hit that that market, and the legging mechanism could sell those Feb that are leaning on that Jan, then yes, it will it will do that cascade effect. But you won't actually see these March bid up to say four dollars and one cent leaning on a February that's leaning on a January, okay? It's a little bit highbrow, but just know that these markets, if there's really tight markets and a lot of participation, a lot of volume and open interest, we all have calendars on and diagonals and um, stuff like that that are leaning on other outright markets, okay? If somebody came in and bid 144 for 100 in the calls here, well, these, February right here might actually go to $3.51 because the person's willing to pay $3.51 and then sell the uh, $1.44s. But know that this market is leaning on this market and the March will not uptick based on this pricing uptick because it will not show a lean on a lean. Okay, there you go. That's a little floor trader uh, chat for you. Can't show a lean on a lean, all right? <laughs> all right, so that's that. But know that if these markets fit that rule, over $100, move it three ticks to the left, that fits the rule. We know there's a lot of eyeballs out here in March. I usually go out, um, you know, 90 to 100 days on my uh, synthetic shorts, synthetic longs, risk reversals. Risk reversals are very similar to those synthetic longs and synthetic shorts, except we are doing half the quantity in a sense because we're doing it 50 deltas. And it gives us a little bit more wiggle room if we are wrong on the downside. So Walmart fits that rule. Uh, for that, I'm going to be looking at uh, trying to build this out for 50 deltas. You can't, you can see I'm not really going to be able to do that uh, here. So maybe I'll look at further in. Uh, of course, I picked one that is terrible on the strikes because they're going five dollars instead of the um the others so in this case you know I, I might end up going a little bit uh further away and building it out for buying those and selling a little bit closer i'd have to be pretty bearish on this though oops i didn't want to do that for 20. Still able to do it for a credit, but um, you know I had to get a little bit tighter. But I'm still being able to build that out for 50 deltas, okay? 
just had to be a little bit more risky, a little tighter on the upside. Okay. That makes sense. That's one of those situations where we're building it out for 50, but just know uh, I don't have as much wiggle room to the upside uh, where on my 125s. But in that case, I could look at this and say my 125s, I got a credit. My break even is actually above this big spike that happened on that. So maybe I'm not too worried about that um, breaking those all time highs right now. So that actually, those strikes. Uh, work out pretty good with my credit. My break evens up here, uh, uh, one twenty five sixty something, right? So able to build that out that way. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? It's pretty simple. I think the best example though that we had was. Uh, in that GLD, and that's the one I'm probably going to be looking at. I don't know that um, gold is really overdone to the upside. Um, I think it's actually priced very close to where I think it's going to stay. But, uh, you know, if the market continues to go higher, we continue to get good economic data, then we are going to see that market um, come off more. All right. All right, well then without further ado, I'll let you guys get out of here with this uh, offer, you guys. This is one of the biggest courses. This would take you into the, maybe the end of the summer. Yes, we're talking about the beginning of the year. We'd be getting close to the end of the summer because you are going to be able to get all of these different classes here on volatility, which is gonna help you sleep at night. You're going to understand volatility better than some guys that are on TV, you guys talking about options. I can guarantee you that. Uh, that's one thing I can guarantee. Uh, the option hacks, these are things we used on the floor where it streamlines your process. When you're looking at things, you're gonna look at them a little bit differently. Hopefully you guys have seen the way that I teach uh, throughout this webinar, giving you guys little hints and things that you can use going forward, things that you aren't going to be able to find online for free. You know, yeah, sometimes you do have to pay for an education that is is worth something. So uh, yes, on, online uh, or on TV, you can get free education, but it's not always the best. Uh, and they don't always give the best strategies for the right environments. Uh, keep that in mind. There's um, guys on TV that are talking about buying calls and buying puts in the wrong environments uh, and low probability strategies. So App hacks will streamline your process. I go to the basics, especially if you're a newer trader, you can take advantage of this and how to set everything up like I do uh, on my trading platform all the way down to uh, the uh, market profile. I love using the market profile. I talked to you guys at the beginning of this. I said that uh, I started out with psychology in college. Well, I think my psychology degree has been more beneficial to me in trading than even my finance degree, to be quite honest, because you know I'm able to take that psychology aspect of it and make everything mechanical. I realize when I'm getting emotional about things and I have to break it back down to uh, making sure that we are staying mechanical. So I'm gonna throw this link, which if you're watching this on tape delay, you're gonna have to uh, pause right here and type this into your URL but I threw that hot link in there. If you pull up the hot link, it should give you a uh, link like this, which is that same strategy. One thing to note right now, if you guys get this, you're gonna get 50 extra recordings that aren't in all of these. So uh, that might even take you into the fall of next year with that many different uh, options. This isn't even just all of the webinars in here. These are just telling you what you're gonna learn about in these different webinars. So it's kind of a breakdown. So there's uh, hundreds of hours of content at this point with this course for $297. So if you got a little extra Christmas money, throw it at that because you are doing yourself a favor by getting this bundled package and saving a lot of money at this point. All right, so take advantage of that. Again, this is that link. You're gonna have to pause it in your, uh, recording to take advantage of it, or just click on that hot link like I did over there and it should pull up a window for you. All right, 
That's all I got. Other than I want to thank you guys all. Later webinars are drilled down on different option components, when and where I find those appropriate, especially in those daily market commentaries. Right now, you guys, I'm implementing. I'm probably going to throw on a uh, GLD um, trade tomorrow on the bearish risk reversal. So check that out. I talk about all the trades, win, lose, or draw. I'm not cherry picking like they're going to do on TV. I'm going to talk about those losers probably more than I talk about my winners because those are the ones we have to stay mechanical in. We have to lower our cost basis. And I talk about all those different ways to do that around a portfolio when it's going against us. Even on a strategy that on an underlying that's winning, I can show you ways to lower your cost basis on that underlying. Um, and in years past, I've I've lowered Twitter down about $30 one time. So uh, that or actually not 30, it was about $20 uh, over the course to where I was almost at a cost basis of zero. Um, anyway, so I just wanna thank you guys all. You can reach out to us at 310-598-6677 or email me at trading at protraderstrategies.com. Again, that's that hot link that uh, is in the chat window. Otherwise, you're going to have to pause and take advantage of it. All right. So I'll leave you guys with that. Alexander, thank you very much for sticking around. I like all, thank you for all the kind words um, and have a great weekend. If you can't take that, take it easy. See you next year, JQ. Good call. <laughs> Bye for now.